When you're fishing on the Y, it's absolutely vital that you have the right ground bait. When you're looking to catch big bags of dace and chublets over your ground bait on either the bolo or the polter hand out in the river, you need to make sure that it's absolutely perfect. The mix that I will always use is two parts river to one part gross god ons. Typically, I'd look to mix two bags of river, one bag of gross god ons, and two to three bags of TDR, depending on the size and quantity of fish that I was looking to catch. The way I'd always mix it is slightly on the dry side. I'd then look to add a mixture of crushed and grilled hemp to the ground bait as it's being mixed. The crushed and grilled hemp is prepared the evening before simply by covering it in a small quantity of boiling water and thoroughly mixing it. If you add the crushed and grilled hemp to the ground bait dry, it's far too active and fizzes and pops off the bottom, which is perfect if you're looking to catch bags of summer roach and dace that are actively feeding off the bottom. But on this river in the winter, you want them pinned down because it's far easier to catch a weight when you're doing that. So I'd start by simply adding the ground bait dry into the bucket. It's important to always mix your ground baits together before you add any water. Slowly add the water. You can always put more in but you can't take it out of the ground bait. Once you start to feel that it's got moisture all the way through the mix, that's when I'd look to add the grilled and crushed hemp. It's very, very important with the grilled and crushed hemp not to add it to the final mix because you'll overwet the ground bait. And if you overwet the ground bait, you won't be able to feed it in hard enough balls out into the river. The grilled and crushed hemp increases the feed content of the ground bait, which is really crucial when you're looking to catch weights of fish that are running up the river. And it allows you to hold them in your peg for fractionally longer than the man up or downstream of you, which in matches where weights are tight can make all the difference to winning or finishing second in section. Now the ground bait's taken on the crushed grilled hemp and the water but it does need fractionally more water before you can add the soil. It's always better that the ground bait is slightly too wet before the soil goes into the mix. The ground bait's now started to fall, form smallish balls and is ready to have the TDR mixed through it. I generally do this one bag at a time and really thoroughly mix it through the ground bait. I don't worry too much about lumps in my ground bait on the Y. The volume of fish that's in here quickly break down any balls. And in actual fact, I think at times it helps to hold them in the peg. The soil that we've added today has been slightly dry, so we will need to add a little bit more water in order to finish the mix. You always want the ground bait fractionally dry because when you're adding large quantities of product, casters, chop worm and hemp seed, all of which are wet, it's important that it's not overly wetted before you start adding the product because the balls won't form. The 
finally to that mix, I will always add a pint to a pint and a half of hemp seed straight in. This helps again to hold the fish in the peg when they come over the top of the ground bait. You should now be able to form a good firm ball that you can throw out into the river and hopefully catch some dace. Once you've got your ground bait mixed up, you've got to look at starting your peg. The best way to start your peg on the Y is to feed between 8 and 10 balls packed with feed. I'd usually look to add 250 mil of chopped worm, minimum of 250 mil of casters, and at least 500 mil of hemp into my initial ground bait. It's vitally important, particularly for fishing the volo, on the volo that you feed this down your peg. It allows you to control the rig over the top of your feed and really get the dace honed in over the top of it. Generally, I'll loose feed a lot of hemp seed throughout the day over the top of the ground bait and continually ball good sized golf ball and larger over the top to keep the dace active in the peg. On certain days, you may even be able to catch the dace on the pole to hand. I'd feed this in exactly the same way, eight to 10 balls at the start and regular top ups throughout the day. Best hook baits for dace are always maggots because they're more durable than casters. You don't necessarily have to feed maggot in the ground bait in order to catch your maggots on the hook. It is just a more durable hook bait and it allows you to really get the dace lined up and in the net as quickly as possible. You can often catch multiple fish on single maggots. The fish have just moved up the peg now, over the top of the ground bait, and we've started to catch some good quality dace on the polder hand. The conditions are making life particularly difficult. The rig that I'm using on the whip is a Census Alberto, which in my opinion is without a doubt the best float for this style of fishing. It's a thin profile float that cuts through the water beautifully on the strike. There's little resistance to the dace when they're feeding. Hook-wise, it's down to a size 14, 6-inch hook length, 013, Olivet approximately 18 inches from the hook, and then a bulk of three number eights directly above the hook length. The beauty of a double bulk when you're fishing for dace is that they have a tendency to come off the bottom, and it allows you to see every single indication on the float. And that's vitally important when you're fishing for big bags of fish because you have to be able to read the peg at all times. Elastic in the whip, I personally prefer to fish a fractionally softer elastic than lots of anglers on this river at the moment because there's always a chance of hooking a big perch, a chub, even roach. There's roach regularly caught at the moment up to nearly three pounds. And if you do hook these bonus fish in a match, they're, they're absolutely crucial. And if you've got a heavy elastic in, you have a tendency to bump them or even get snapped. That's why I fish a census yellow hollow, which is probably between a 10 to 12. And that's set relatively soft. It still enables you to swing the dace, but it just allows you the opportunity of landing the big bonus fish if you do catch some. It's important when the dace come into the peg to feed a ball of ground bait every cast. That needs to be fed downstream of where you're fishing. If you feed the ground bait upstream, the dace will run past you and it then makes it nearly impossible to catch them. As soon as the run of fish starts to slow, I will loose feed more maggots into the peg because it will draw fresh fish into the swim. Hemp is always fed slightly upstream of the ground bait 
but again, just helps to pinpoint the days. I hope you've enjoyed today's video on the Y, and if you do get a chance to come down here, it really is a cracking bit of water to fish. This stretch is a day ticket water. It's Hereford and District Angling Association. You can get day tickets from Woody's Tackle Shop in Hereford. For more information on any of the products we've used, contact your local census stockist.